Dr. Peter Duisberg, a molecular cell biology professor at UC Berkeley, appeared in the spotlight recently for his controversial theory about HIV and AIDS. And then we can have some questions later. AIDS was said to be caused by a new retrovirus, a new pathogenic retrovirus, HIV, in 1984, and accepted by the world. East by the US and then the world. They all follow us when it comes to viruses. In a paper from Harvard, like two years ago, I was framed by a former colleague, friend, Max Essex, as a mass murderer because I suggested or advised former President Mbeki of South Africa that HIV is not causing AIDS and therefore we don't need to use condoms and not use antiviral drugs. We have a vaccine against AIDS. 25 years we have said that. And we have spent billions in it. Here's a vaccine. So you, there's an AIDS patient, he gets a vaccine, three weeks later it's fine. That would be the answer. I would be gone. Or, here is a, what have you, here's a, yeah, an antibody. That would be the best respo response to what I'm saying, that it's not the virus. If you have an effective vaccine, you know, shut up. You know. Or, if AIDS spreads sexually in the general population like viruses do for 25 years come on how much longer should we wait where in the history of viruses and microbes have we ever seen those that only st stay with with a small minority of male homosexuals and junkies so that means they, they are they <coughs> become ill because of their lifestyle, not that, the virus. That's exactly what I'm saying. And I'm not the only one that was said before I even was interested in AIDS. I was a virologist. I only reacted to the claims that such a virus would cause a fatal disease. Dr. Duisberg faced many repercussions as a result of his controversial studies about AIDS. Well, they say I'm denialist. I'm denying the hypothesis. What well, that's, it's, it, that's not even a scientific word, you know. So. They link it to Holocaust denialist, this kind of thing. It's a political thing, denialist. If you have different opinions, then we are each denying each other's opinion. So we are denialists. It's a religious, political thing. But um, I don't know what I'm denying here. Yeah. And they say I don't keep up with the literature. And, I mean, if anybody has kept up, this just came out. You can see the literature here. There's a lot of references in there. They just don't like this conclusion. Research kind of applications. I have all the money. I wanted literally. I wanted for 20 years until I questioned it. So we all applications. No. So in the freest of all countries, as our former President Reagan uh, no, Bush called it. <coughs> It's not so free when it comes to politically incorrect scientific conclusions. I thought I did my job. You know, I thought here I was hired to be a professor in molecular biology, studying viruses. The, the, the first thing I owe the public, or the Californians or the Americans who paid for me, uh, at least tell them the best I can say about it. I may be wrong, but you can only find out when you check it, or test it, or discuss it. Science has never been unanimous. It's not like, or even majority vote. It's always single or individual opinions that come up. Typically, if, it's, if something new comes up, it comes not from a majority. It comes from one or two nuts. And often they are nuts. And I could be, well, that's good. All be to it.